it's about 12 months literally near enough to the day since i uploaded the big video that everybody seems to have come from i thought today i'd watch it and i guess sort of share my thoughts about it really so it'd be one of these kind of videos i wouldn't say it's a reaction video as such it's just more like a 12 month review so this is my channel and this is it so currently it's sat at uh, 216,000 views that's a lot of views that i didn't expect i'm quite nervous to be fair i'm quite nervous hi to whoever's out there if there's anybody out there I wanted to do this video because I've seen a couple and it seems like it helped the people behind the camera. It's so quiet. This is my version. I'm nearly 35 years old. My life's a failure. It's a tricky one because a lot of it is. See, bad. already, I won't lie, already I can feel sort of emotions coming because. I know what these 12 months have been like and I know when I put this video up how I wanted these 12 months to go and they yeah and a lot of it is being over emotional which as a guy especially when you're growing up in the 80s and 90s it's not good it's not no good. I agree however when I look at where I am currently in life 35 years old it's just a massive reflection on how much of a failure my life has been I'm 35 years old. I still live at home with my folks because I haven't been able to get me a good enough job that's going to be paying me a wage that I can get out of here. Which is something that I wanted to kind of talk on, really. Not finding a job that's paying enough of a wage. That that gap has only got bigger, and that's for everybody. I mean, I have been reading pretty much all the comments that I get on this video, and it seems it doesn't matter particularly where you are in the Western world the the wages just just aren't enough regardless just literally seems that the majority of people the average amount of people if you're not in that kind of higher one percent bracket just western world is just it's not in a good place man um friend wise i've got a couple now and again relationships fail massively and uh, all in all it just makes you feel like you're a massive failure a massive failure it's tough to admit it because you always try and go through life trying to be the best you that you can be I've always tried to do that I've kept out yeah. of a lot of trouble and sometimes you wonder do your life experiences suffer as a result that's something you... that I, I still feel to this day really because i guess i've been brought up to try and always be i i, I have a very old school mind in that i feel that i represent my parents it's like it's a very i don't know what 17th century 18th century kind of thinking where you are supposed to carry on from your parents and it's like you inherit whatever they kind of drop off and it and it's responsibility as well as how the world sees you it's very much the old school regime of you should be seen and not heard as a child and then when you carry that stuff into like the adult way my parents are quite known throughout the community around here so i feel like i'm letting them down as well as sort of like in the eyes of them from the community's point of view if that makes sense like when people ask about me and they say you know various situations and that it's like you can feel the disappointment it's i don't know i know a lot of people say that you shouldn't look at yourself through the eyes of most of other people you shouldn't compare yourself to other people but Within myself, there's also places that I hoped to be by now that I'm not. So I do put a lot of pressure on myself. And like I say, with that like old school mentality, it really doesn't help things. You not 
having as much fun as everybody else. And what are you trying to prove either to yourself or to others? But I guess for me, I've been brought up with the morals to try and be the best person I can be. That's like the nicest, the kindest, whatever else. And my patience has kind of tried to reflect that when it comes to relationships, but something <laughs> about me. A levels, I did law, psychology, and graphics. Didn't know what I wanted to do. I just wanted to do interesting stuff, but I came out with ease. Not with ease, but with, with ease. ease, you know, nearly <laughs> fails. I needed that. I'm not going to lie. I needed to put that little bit of. In my head, it was a little bit of something to smile about because just thinking about stuff here is. It's tough because I'm, I'm still in that situation where you feel that you're supposed to know what you're meant to do by this age. And I still don't know what I have slowly start to realize as time has gone on is i like creativity and i i don't know what form that kind of goes but i feel that if you look at artists you look at sculptors you look at all those sort of those creative arts people who are in a okay position in those arts started them from a really young age so there's a lot of catching up to do i'm also I've been fortunate enough to work at an art foundry and you you understand that art isn't necessarily a way to make money a lot of the artists there they have to have other jobs because as much as they would want to be full-time it just doesn't doesn't pay the bills they spend so many hours on a on a piece and what i've find really interesting when you work in the art world you, you start to understand the prices of pieces especially in the sculpture world where where i was for a brief time you see you'll see a sculpture and it'll be a life-size sculpture and it'll sell for fifty thousand, and people will be blown away and think that that is a massive amount of money but when you realize the process is all labor and all materials the profit margin on that fifty thousand is really really slim like really slim so art is it's a really expensive hobby i think is the best way to put it because most people that's all it will really be it will never be a full-time income because it just it just doesn't work that way uh, but again from the perspective of a buyer you see a piece of artwork in it is a stupid amount of money, but from the perspective of a worker that's worked in that industry, it's really not as much as you think. When you've took into account all the hours that have gone into it, and with a lot of stuff, it's man hours. It's not machine hours, it's man hours. The prices do start to make sense, but that still doesn't mean that just because you can understand why something costs 50000 doesn't mean anybody is more likely to pay that sort of money for it. Does that make sense? Didn't know what I wanted to do was seeing a girl at the time and she was in a city far away and I kept visiting her and I really liked the architecture of the city. So I had a bit of a light bulb moment. Hey, why don't I go into the building trade? So I went to college. And I think that's where it all started to go wrong because whilst I was at college, I needed a shoulder operation. And that was my first one. First of three shoulder operations go there and, and sort of have my operation and stuff but the relationship sort of fell down she was college was tricky as well like in the uk you hear a lot in the news about uh, in in now times parents that take kids out of school get fined for doing so when i was at college it was a two-year course the second year of that the college didn't have a lecture for my course. So I would turn up for college. We would go to our classroom and we would wait. And eventually uh, a lecturer from one of the other subjects close by would come in and say, you don't have a lecturer. There's nobody in to teach you this course. You might as well all go home. I spent a lot of that second year traveling 17 miles 
just to come back again. Just because, like, the place itself didn't provide what we needed. Luckily, in the end, towards the sort of middle end of the year, they did start to find somebody who was actually consistent. That was one of their other problems, for whatever reason. They would get a lecturer, he'd do a day, and then you'd never see him again. And it got to the point where the guy that finished the course, I knew personally because he was part of the same rugby club as me, and he wasn't a lecturer, he was just a builder. But the college got so desperate that that's what they started to do. They just went, is there anybody who understands this that can just tell these how to do it? Like, it, they didn't care if you had a teaching qualification or not at that point. They just needed somebody who could say, I can build and I can just tell them how to do it. Just to get us through the exam. It was wild. I used to speak to him about stuff and he just used to say, it's just, it's just a bit crazy how... They literally gave him a, a pack of, like, paperwork, basically, and this is what they need to learn. Good luck. And that was it. That was basically all he was told. Like, we used to have uh, various different, like, assemblies and stuff, or we'd have meetings with the head of the department or something, and he wouldn't even know that these meetings are happening. Like, people would just turn up, and he'd be like, oh, what's this all about then? And then it's like, he would, like, be introduced to this... Uh, senior member of staff that he's supposed to know if he was a lecturer, and they've just rocked up to his room like, he hasn't got a clue who these people are. He was so out of his depth, it was just insane, but fair play to him, he got us through. I appreciate him, he got us through. No idea what he's doing now, haven't seen him since, so... Yeah, but it, that was weird when it... When you think it's your education, and the importance of it and it's like now the teachers are going on strike now i don't have a problem with the teachers going on strike but what i do have a problem is when parents take their children out of school early and the parents are fined because it's damaging to their child's education that you take your child out of school but over here the teachers can go on strike for a couple of days and that's okay that's not damaging the children's education so it, this, just the world is so backwards in how it does stuff. It's just crazy. Anyway. I was at university. I was not. And obviously with distance and stuff, when it's young love, it, it doesn't really work. Things happen. And then you're just trying to find out what your path is in life. Now, annoyingly, when I came out of college, just learning all this building trade stuff, there was no apprentices available. Uh, I couldn't get any sort of job. I tried I everything. Get any sort of knowledge, so I ended up working at the local supermarket, and the only place that had jobs from there really. Decided I was going to go to university, so I went to university to study civil engineering, and I think this is where it all just all started to go wrong for me. My early twenties, university was easy. It was a subject that I picked. I chose to do this, and I really liked it, and I got involved with another girl. And I couldn't understand what was wrong with this relationship. I, things were getting thrown in my face. It just didn't make any sense. And I tried my hardest. I just had a... I want to say a realisation, but I know deep down it's something that I've known. But maybe wanted to ignore. Because I don't really know how to process it. And listening to me speak here about stuff in terms of relationships I feel that I have tried to find I don't know if it's love or acceptance for who I am for so long and I think that's why I I basically scupper my own chances in various different aspects of life when I find a, a bit of a love interest. When I really think about it, when I hear myself talk about it, and I'm just turning it over, I, I know how bad I kind of withdraw from everything and everybody when I start to get an interest. And I, I guess the only real reason why I might do that when I think about it is because I'm trying to chase something that I potentially didn't feel as a child 
which is kind of sad. Because that's what I've seen from my dad, is to do as much as you can and give your all to somebody. And I had this crazy feeling that this was supposed to be the one, you know? I still remember it. But it, was it didn't happen. scary, man. Again, this is like two years later after my first operation. My operation failed and I needed another one. The problem was things come to a head with this girl and Christmas relationship broke down shoulder operation and then as a result of the shoulder operation the university kicked me out they said that I'd had too much time away and not to come back but I still remember was, it. I'd done everything the university asked me they asked me to be you know on with my studies and I was at the top of all my classes and they just threw me out so I must admit that was the first time mentally I still remember that because it was it was the darkest place that I've ever ever been in my life when just everything just all went at once it just all went at once and I just felt so I think cheated is probably the right word because the university I before I even went to university I told them what was going to happen and they basically laid out a set of conditions in front of me and said, do you think that you can meet these conditions? And I was like, oh yeah. They weren't difficult conditions. They would just literally be, I had to be up to date with all the work. I didn't have to be top of the class or anything like that. I just had to be, you know, capable, show my capability to do the work and they were willing to send work through. Otherwise, you know, they were basically going to say no. And I felt so cheated because I kept up with all of my work. A couple of the lessons I was flying. I found it so easy. It was so fun. And when I got that letter to say don't return. At that time with everything just going. <laughs> wrong, I suppose. I kind of had university in the back of my head as being something I had to look forward to because obviously it'd be like going back to university, see my university friends, just getting on. And it was like that independent life and stuff that you get when you go away like that. But to get that letter through, it just, it just blew the bottom out. I just felt so cheated because I just, it was the first time in my life that I can really think of where somebody has given me a set of conditions and told me if I meet these and everything as well. And I didn't just meet them, I surpassed them. But they still went in the direction of, nope. And I, I, I just, even to this day, I don't know how to process that. I don't know how to, I don't know how to make sense of it. I don't know how to make sense to somebody saying, look, if you do this, you can carry on. And then you overachieve and they turn around going like, no sorry no not not coming back cheers thanks bye it just didn't make sense to me and i think it's because i've always wanted or tried to be treated fairly in life now i know life itself isn't fair but i do think that you should have situations that you are treated fairly in you should be treated the same as another. Or, you know, if somebody sets out a load of conditions and you accept them, it's like a contract. They wrote the contract out. Did I agree to the conditions of the contract? Hell yeah, I did. But I didn't just achieve what they wanted. I, I went above and beyond it and it still meant absolutely nothing. It still meant nothing. And I think that that really just... That burns away. It really does burn away. I crashed. Everything just went wrong all at the same time. And I, I couldn't deal with it. I really couldn't deal with it. I really enjoyed that uni course. And it was the one thing that I felt was going to put me somewhere in life. And they booted me out. I didn't want to appeal it. I didn't want to go through all the hassle because the mental state just wasn't there. 
Anyway, fast forward a couple months and I got a job working for an electrician company. It's not what I wanted to do. I was only in the office doing admin, but minimum wage, you do what you do, you try and get by. It wasn't really happening, but the economy was shit. There was nowhere to go. I was applying for all sorts of jobs and nothing was coming back. So I even applied. So whilst I was working that job and I knew I wasn't happy with it, I applied for so much stuff around here and nothing, you, you didn't even get a negative response. You just got no response whatsoever. And it got to the point where I was even looking to start franchises. I was just absolutely anything to just not be in that same situation and just nothing was coming back. And this is supposed to be like, and this is at a time when realistically you're supposed to be sort of working really hard because when you're in your sort of 20s, that's the best time to just work really hard because it's sort of for your physical health and stuff. You should be up and towards your peak. You, you sort of peak out around your sort of late 20s into your early 30s. And then it's a very steady, just natural decline over time. That's like physical health and stuff. So there's a lot of different ways and means of like when you should put the most effort into work and stuff. But in just a natural progression, you, you kind of come from school into college into learning and then you're supposed to attack the workplace while you're young and fresh and just have that curiosity to just go at it. And I was just getting met with just nothing, just absolutely nothing. An apprenticeship and I thought, well, if I can't get out, I might as well try and get something from it. And I did the apprenticeship four years. And there was no work during those four years for me to get on-site training. So again, I dragged myself through the mud to get my qualifications with no training whatsoever to come out of that with a qualification. So technically I'm an electrician, but I've got no fucking idea. I moved to a different electrical firm to try and get some knowledge. And bro, when you're put up against apprentices who've got more understanding of stuff than you, you realise how much of a fraud you are. I didn't want to be an electrician anyway, but the problem was I tried my best to do what I could my side to give me the best chance. But when it comes down to it and you have no training, you just feel like a fraud. It's all I've done is go through life. I will also add to that. It's really embarrassing. Like genuinely, I came out of college with my qualification, four years apprenticeship training, which basically meant four years of me sat in the office at work doing all the admin stuff that I was doing before because the on-site stuff wasn't there. And then if we did get it, obviously my boss put the people who he's paying the money to, like his actual electricians, he put them on the job. So I wasn't even on any jobs when we did get them. So when you go to a different place and you're working on site, like I say, with apprentices from other companies, you're, how old would I have been? Really late twenties. You're a fully qualified electrician and you've got a 17, 18 year old apprentice over there and you're turning to him going, mate, can you help me out here? I don't know, I don't know what I'm doing with this. That is massively embarrassing, like hugely, hugely embarrassing where you've got the age and you've supposedly got the experience and you're going to some kid who's just come out of school and you're asking them for help. That is, it's borderline humiliating from a, from a, a work perspective. And when that started to happen, for sure, I knew I couldn't work for this company and that it just really cemented that I didn't want to do this kind of line of work. And now I know for sure that I don't. But it was just humiliating. Just not cool. Trying to find who I am. And just failing all the, all the way. Like I say, 35 years old. I've watched my closest friends that I do have that I'm gradually drifting away from. They've grown up, they've got married, they've got kids. I'm still at home inside these four walls, which by the way, this is 
It's about the size of a prison cell. It's just depressing, man. And I try whatever I can to get out of here. And I just... I'm stuck. At 35 years old, I'm watching life rush past. Trying not to show anybody that I'm screwed. But I know that I'm the joker of the group. I said to my last... My two friends, like, the last time I met up with them, four months ago or something, I said to them, calm as anything, I was like, I know you guys only keep me around because it make you feel better about your own lives. And they were like, what do you mean? <laughs> because when you look and reflection, this is how bad your life could be. And it ain't. But I just needed to get this off my chest, I think. I'm carrying... I will say on the back of that, like... I've I've done a lot of I don't know soul searching digging trying to understand the stuff lately and I know that I owe those to an apology so in a couple of weeks it's going to be my birthday and we're supposed to be going out for like a lunch and it should just be the three of us and I kind of want to I owe them an apology. I shouldn't let how I feel about myself sort of spill out outwardly and then put them in an awkward situation. And when you sit and think, like, I, I, I sat and thought so much because of our stupid time this year, but on reflection, there's a lot of stuff that you think you're doing the right thing. But when you look at it for a different set of eyes, it looks worse. And I suppose how, how I think I'm always there for my friends, but how I'm very take a back seat with them, from their perspective can look like, actually, I don't put any effort in and... I'm just waiting for them to make the first, you know, let's do this, let's do that kind of moves. That's not how I want to be, and it's not something that I really realised until I've had time to think about it. And I, on reflection, not just there, but like I say, just how I, I realised maybe I am as a friend has been pretty shit. I should be a better friend, even though I I feel that I'm there for them and I'll make the time of day to see them if they're in crisis or anything like that. When life is going good for them, I rarely reach out to them and just say hey or rarely, rarely re reach out to them and just see if they just want to hang out. I just assume that they're so busy with their life and I'm doing the right thing by letting them get on with it. And when they've got a free moment, they'll reach out, say hey, but it, it works both ways, you know. And it's not something that particularly realised. And I don't know why, but I always feel that taking the back seat is the right option. I suppose it's because my life ain't busy. It's going nowhere. So I'm almost always available. Whereas everybody else, the wives, the kids, their careers, they're the busy ones. I don't want to add to their stress. And I feel that if I reach out, I'm, I'm just adding a, an inconvenience to them when they've got so much going on as it is. Uh, but after a little bit of reflection, maybe that's, maybe surprisingly, that's, that's not the right way to think about things, you know. People who... People who want to talk to you will find the time to reply and talk to you. People who don't, I guess it's how you, you work out where people fit in your life, right? I don't know. We're nearly there anyway. I had a lot of emotional stress and anxiety and I just needed to just talk to somebody. And unfortunately, you guys were it. You guys were it. So 12 months later on, 
if you don't know, I had spinal surgery this year. So this year has been a mess. 